The fact that we're able to address everything from the discovery of the fundamental material all the way to the testing of prototypical devices makes it just that more likely that one day these can be considered for enabling a future technology. Electrolytes are really important components of lots of electronics. You will typically find them in, for example, batteries. Oftentimes, you will have liquid electrolytes. Other times, there might be solid state electrolytes, but there are some properties that are hard to get right between those two. So it'd be really nice to have materials that you can switch between a solid and a liquid um, and that perform equally as well. We've developed materials where their conductivity is carried over from the liquid phase into the solid state without a drop in their ionic conductivity. We find that their conductive properties and mechanisms don't diminish with a change of state. The reason that happens is that there's a positively charged large organic molecule which spreads out its charge really effectively. And so you end up with this disk of charge that allows the material to assemble in the solid state. Those disks are then able to stack on top of one another, a bit like pancakes in a stack, and give us a column of these positively charged organic molecules. It's counter ion and negatively charged chloride or bromide that's then free to hop around that lattice without being too attracted to the center of those columns. We needed to get an understanding of how the molecules are assembling with one another. And so that took a collaboration of some different teams. Our work in synthetic chemistry, we had help from your group with electrochemistry and also others at York, and Durham, and some other institutions who helped us study the, the solid state structures and how these molecules are assembling by lots of techniques. With the organic ionic solids that we work with, we can easily melt them at quite accessible temperatures, kind of 50 or 60 degrees, and then they can set again as solids at room temperature. Uh, and we don't see any big drop off in conductivity when that happens, which is the unusual property that we've developed. So that feature of being able to retain its properties irrespective of the state that the material is in is really valuable when it comes to thinking about applications that this material could be used for. At the moment, it's the negatively charged part that moves around quite freely. But what would be really nice is to switch that around so that the positively charged part can move around so that we could have conductivity of something like lithium or sodium, which is really useful for battery technologies. But we can also start to think of applications that are a bit more futuristic and advanced, such as miniaturization of computing technologies. Our groups have just moved from the University of York and just joined the chemistry department at the University of Oxford. And so we're now developing next generations of these electrolytes because we've now made this fundamental advance and we know the design criteria to make these kind of materials, we can use organic synthesis to quite easily change these structures and optimize them from here. And I think that's the most exciting um, aspect of the research, that these are being all developed through organic synthesis, so relatively straightforward methods, but with a very vast toolbox of chemistry. We do have the versatility to uh, design these electrolytes for many different types of applications and properties.